As Bristol turned out to welcome this rusting, broken old ship, many must have wondered what all the fuss was about. A few months before this homecoming, she'd been forgotten, abandoned on the other side of the world. So why is the SS Great Britain just so important? Well, it's not just that she was a huge ship designed by a guy called Isambard Kingdom Brunel. It's far more to it than that. She was the biggest, the fastest, the most comfortable ship the world had ever seen, and she was designed and dreamt up here in Bristol. When Prince Albert launched the SS Great Britain in July 1843, she was the Concorde of her day. Until that point, sea travel in wooden sailing vessels had always been slow, unpredictable and highly dangerous. The SS Great Britain had a tough metal hull and a propeller. She was light years ahead of anything else on the waves. She could get to Australia in two months. She could go to a timetable. She was the first um, ship that combined steam and sail, which meant that when the wind dropped, the engines could go on and she could steam on through and she was also incredibly luxurious, so a real groundbreaking ship. School children learn about her extraordinary history. The SS Great Britain was the first great ocean liner. The SS Great Britain sailed around the world 32 times. The SS Great Britain took the first English cricket team to Australia in 1861. She clocked up an amazing million miles on the water over 80 years. She was strong, powerful and reliable, all thanks to her designer's genius. Engineers today who design ships using computers can only come up with propellers that are slightly, just slightly more efficient than this one, which was designed in the 1840s by Brunel with a pen and paper. Powering across the oceans, she was more like a floating city. On board, there were surgeons, stables, ship's kitchens, galleys providing dinner for 600 diners a day. Baths, bunks, cats and rats, and passengers from all social backgrounds. Passengers had dances and social evenings and music and even their own newspaper, the SS Great Britain Time. There were all different types of social classes, unlike any other previous ship on board, weren't there? That's right. The whole social structure was really, really stratified. Different types of menus for different types of class of passenger. Absolutely. We've got a, a diary here written by Alan Gilmore, a steerage passenger. It's third class, isn't third it? Third class, that's right, where he talks about only getting water biscuits, so those are really nasty, hard, dry biscuits. And in contrast, we've then got the bill of fare for the first class passengers here, and they've got at least sort of five types of pudding. Fricassee then, of fowl, That's pig's right, head. pig's heads, delicious. Many reached Australia heavier than they left, unheard of. 15,000 emigrated down under on this ship, and this legacy continues. Today, 300,000 Aussies are descended from the Victorians who left Great Britain on the Great Britain. And in her long life, she helped, at least in a small way, in four wars. By the last conflict, she was scuttled in the Falkland Islands, the Royal Navy using her metal to patch working ships. There, she would have rusted to oblivion had it not been for a group of enthusiasts paying for her hazardous, daring return across the Atlantic to Bristol. No sooner had the Great Britain docked than Prince Philip was welcomed aboard by Richard Gould. And, and on July the 19th, 1970, the Duke of Edinburgh watched the SS Great Britain return and inspected the ship. The current Queen's consort as fascinated as Queen Victoria's consort, Albert, was launching her back in 1843. Over the decades, the SS Great Britain has been put back to pieces, restored to a past glory. But she's played an important part in restoring Bristol's glory. When she returned, there were plans to fill in the harbour and build roads. The arrival of this symbol, the city's maritime past, ended that. There was a bill being promoted, an Act of Parliament being promoted, that was effectively closing the harbour as a statutory port, building new roads, bridges, decking in large parts of the, the harbour itself. So with the SSJGB coming back 
it sort of gave a story that perhaps there was a future for the harbour, but in a slightly different direction, that direction being a leisure harbour. So, in a way, the SS Great Britain saved the city, which had saved her. Bristol and her legendary ship intertwined. Robert Murphy in Bristol for the West Country tonight.